Hey guys, we are here for finals of the midseason showdown. Uh, in case you couldn't tell, I'm no longer solo commentating. Um, if you don't recognize the person next to me, this is Giovanni Costa. One and only. Um, anyway, so for today, the people who are playing are Alex and Thomas, yes? And um, So besides winning a trophy, which is all really cool, they get to win a Switch Lite, which I actually had in my hand, but but it's, it's fine. They get to win this. Yeah, Al actually, this. Alex does not have a Nintendo Yeah, Alex Switch. doesn't have a Switch. He's borrowing his little brothers, so um, be a really big this could be Alex's. Yeah. I'm super excited for him, but on your left side, you've got Alex's team of that Hitmon top. The Rotom Wash of Vanillux, a Lapras, Dragapult, and Corviknight, which you just did see. And then Thomas on your right is going to be that Arcanine, Duraludon, uh, Gastrodon, Grim, Snarl, Gyarados, and Mudsdale. Yeah, so looking at um, uh, <laughs> looking at Alex's team, I feel like uh, his uh, Vanillux is not really going to do much here. I mean, if he has Freeze Dry, he could do something against the, the Gastrodon, but that Arcanine, the Duraludon, could do a ton of damage to it. And Gyarados is not really going to feel much damage, unless, again, it has Freeze Dry or something like that. Yeah, I mean, and a lot of the Arcanine today that I've seen have been running so, uh, Snarl again, so a lot of special attack drops. drylodon has been uh, kind of a mainstay staple, and then Grim Snarl always having the screens up, so getting the Reflect, getting the light screens. It's been really rough to see people try to take it down, and I don't think that Corviknight is G-Max on Alex's side, uh, and the G-Max move for a Gigantamax Corviknight actually breaks screens. I actually did not know that. I saw that for the first time today in round six during that three, uh, it was a kind of a fun thing to watch. I was very surprised. Yeah, watching Alex use that Corviknight in a previous match has been really interesting. He's been using our defense along with Body Press, which is pretty much like using the Swords Dance, but it also helping your defense at the same time. So we're about to get started here. Uh, this is the finals of the midseason showdown with a Nintendo Switch Lite on the line as well as a really, really good trophy. So we've got the Grimstall and Mudsdale combination we've seen with the own tempo and the swagger combination and hit him on top and Lapras for Alex, the lead here, the own tempo not going to be affected by Intimidate. A new update here with the generation of Sword and Shield. I also did not know that. I really should like start like, <laughs> studying up on the, the uh, changes on Pokemon. Yeah, so actually Intimidate got kind of nerfed this season. Uh, again, own tempo doesn't get uh, doesn't get affected by Intimidate, and it it's, it's one of the more important things here because now you've got things where like Pokemon before don't have to worry about it as much, and then Swagger the side Swaggering a strategy is still a pretty big thing here. You're gonna see Alex is gonna immediately uh, Dynamax one of his Pokemon. Um, I think he's been Dynamaxing the Lapras. Uh, the entire time, it's not, and it's not Gigantamaxing in Lapras, which is interesting. Because um, it's not legal right oh, it's now. it's not? No, Gigantamax is Gigant Gigant not legal right now. It's available in-game, but it's not legal, most not yet. Good thing I didn't use that today. Uh, so, here we're gonna see him on top going for the fake out. No uh, Dynamax coming from uh, Thomas' side. Grimstyle is not gonna be able to move. Max Geyser is gonna go into, I'm assuming that Mudsdale slot. It's gonna do a good amount of damage. Almost picking up the KO, but not enough. Might be an Assault Vest variant. Um, Mudsdale is a very, very bulky Pokemon, so there's yet to see that. High Horsepower hitting that Lapras, not going to do that much damage either. Yeah, Hitmon Top stopping that Grimstone is nice because one, you stop anything from a Reflect or a Light Screen going up, but more importantly, like we've seen in multiple Mudsdales today, you stop the Side Swagger and you stop the own tempo, so. So Mudsdale is a little bit less of a threat here, and um, with the rain coming down, it'll, be, it'll help a little bit with Max Geyser, um, but now that Light Screen is going to negate that just a little bit. Yeah, but uh, that first uh, Max Geyser did so much damage, and the close combat is going to be a cup of Gale here into the Mudsdale, so whatever that Lapras goes, if it goes for another Max Geyser into the Grim Snarl, it's going to do a ton of damage now that rain is actually up. Uh, we're going to see, and it's actually Max Hailstorm, so he's going to get uh, Hail up here. Uh, kind of interesting to see that he's going to give up uh, getting that boost in the water for the little bit of chip damage that Hail does. I actually appreciate that because at least now that with Hail, all the Pokemon on Thomas' side are going to take that chip damage as well. I mean, I think for Alex, he cares less a little bit about that because he's got enough firepower in the Pokemon with the back. Like, Dragapult and Corviknight are, aren't exactly Pokemon that just do passive, supportive things. Um, and Duraludon is also just going to take that damage from there as well. So I'm interested in seeing Duraludon because it is neutral to um, the ice moves here. So I'm not sure really how uh, Thomas is going to be doing uh, damage I, to that Lapras. Yeah, I think going for the uh, Dynamax and Duraludon on this turn is something we can expect to see from him because Max Steel Spike has just been so fantastic with it. You get that boost in defense as well. Um, and I mean, Alex switching out him on top is also, you know, saving it for later as well, that Intimidate. Yeah. 
Oh, I'm gonna fake out. Yes, yeah, so we're gonna get that Corviknight coming in, and yeah, that Growlithon is gonna Dynamax here. It's gonna increase its damage by quite a bit, and also the Max Steel sp Spike is gonna be able to assist his team quite a lot with uh, defense, please? Yep. Good. I learned something today. Uh, Rallodon is going to get that boost in uh, HP and it's probably going to go for this max steel spike into that Lapras slot to start getting some damage onto it. And Grimmsnarl with the Reflect is going to uh, get 50% more uh, defense for the entire team. Actually, it's going to be interesting to see exactly how much that does it. Not actually even that much. You do get the plus defense to both Dural Duraludon and to Grimmsnarl. Uh, Grimmsnarl holding light clay means that that reflect in that um, light screen is going to be a little bit more annoying. But Max Hillstorm from Lapras, uh, getting as much damage as you can onto something like Duraludon is always a smart idea. I'm actually surprised it did that much damage considering that the uh, light screen is up. Uh, so hail damage doing a little bit to everybody here. Uh, now that Lapras is going to lose that Dynamax, it's not going to be able to. It's not going to do as much damage as it was doing before. But I, I still feel like uh, Alex is getting a lot of mileage with that Lapras, and it's taking very little to no damage. I mean, it's kind of hard to come up with an answer for Lapras when you don't really expect it. Right? It's one of those Pokemon where people don't really have the use for it yet. I know there's been talk about Gigantamax Lapras for when it is legal, but I mean, when you look at Alex's team, there's not a lot, but like both Hitmontop and Lapras aren't things that you would really expect. So we're going to see the Swagger going into the Lapras here, so Thomas is going to go for the 50-50 here. He's going to get the confusion onto this Lapras, so whether or not the Lapras is going to move is it's yet to be seen. Max Whirlwind going into the Lapras slot. It's gonna, wow, that did a lot of damage. Dragon type uh, max move. Oh, oh also hit. gets. <laughs> that's rough. Beth. So, get the mirror armor switch, is also uh, gets the attack down onto. Yeah, so the mirror armor will reflect that attack drop back onto Duraludon because it was the one that used that uh, max move, and that is not going to be able to pick up that knockout yet either. So, we're going to see if Lapras is going to be able to move. If it's not, it's going to get knocked out, and it does hit itself into confusion, so it does get finally get taken down. But that Lapras did a lot of work for Alex. I feel like he got a lot of mileage. And if it wasn't for that critical hit, I feel like he he would have had that Lapras for at least a, a couple more turns. Yeah, I mean, I think right now Alex is probably in a spot where he can at least take try to take care of the Duraludon. It might be the Dynamax right now, but after it's done, you're able to do something like maybe go for a close combat. You still have the chance to go for... Um, to fake out here if you need to, but the Intimidate thing is a little bit more important. Um, Dynamaxing, tur uh, sorry, Dynamax Pokemon can't be faked out though. Yeah, so he would have to fake out the Grin Snarl here, and Duraludon, I don't feel like Duraludon is going to be putting that much pressure into either Corviknight or him on top, especially now that it's been intimidated. Uh, we could see Thomas going for a little bit of uh, risky play and maybe self -swag side swaggering himself and trying to get uh, that attack boost. Ooh, and we actually have Rotom as the last Pokemon here for Alex, that Rotom Wash variant in place of the Corver Knight. And a fake out going into that Grim Snarl, so not going to quite pick up the KO here as Max Moon one more time. The last turn, I think, for this Duraludon uh, is going to not pick up the knockout yet either on the Hitmontop, but will lower the attack for both Pokemon as Corver Knight is no longer here to reflect that with Mirror Armor. Yeah, so Grim Snarl is flinch. Uh, Rotom, takes a, everybody's going to take a little bit of uh, chip damage from the hail. Uh, the hit on top is almost knocked out, and yeah, I feel like now, now that Duraludon has gotten a lot of mileage for Thomas, where Lapras got a lot of mileage for Alex, Duraludon has just put in so much work here, and it's still with a good, decent amount of HP, and he still has both screens up at this moment in time. Hitmontop is going to be retreating back to Alex as we're going to get that Corviknight back on the field here. And I think Duraludon is in a little bit of a pickle here as Grimstone goes for the Swagger, goes into that Rotom as well. So trying to go for those confusions and Alex is being forced to switch out to reset that confusion specifically because you don't want to hurt yourself and knock yourself out or do unnecessary damage. And uh, Rotom going for the Thunderbolt onto that Grimstone going to finally pick up that knockout and force Thomas down to his own last two Pokemon. Yeah, so we're just going to see Flash Cannon come for Duraludon here. It's not going to do that much damage for either Pokemon. Very little to that Corviknight. can easily take quite a few more of these. Uh, and it's actually going to activate the Key Berry? No, it's the Maronga Berry. Uh, so it's going to increase the special defense for a little bit for the remainder of the time it's up. So we still don't know what the last Pokemon for Thomas is. If it's something like Gastrodon, but oh, it's that Arcanine. So 
Arcanine is gonna be able to. This is really nice for uh, for Alex actually to have this out on the field right now. Yeah. So now the Intimidate is gonna be reflected back, and then Draladon is gonna be at, I believe, at a minus two, maybe three. Uh, Draladon's still at minus one. It's Arcanine who's gonna get that minus one. Instead. But it did get. Didn't you get something reflected earlier? It was just a minus one from uh from. It was only once. So now it's. Two. Still at minus one. Okay. So. Uh. So. Darkeid is putting a lot of threat into that Corviknight, and Alex doesn't really have a way to um, anything that can switch into a flamethrower. Corviknight is gonna take wow that KO oh it's a critical hit wow that's like two critical hits um, on that yeah. spot to do that it's gonna be a, that's a rough thing to actually kind of have to handle but Rotom did snap out of confusion and if it can oh, oh. I was gonna say if it connects the hydro flip, that would have been nice but Alex. nope I take that back sorry Alex that is really rough as you take that uh, like the Draco meter to the face for Rotom is not quite knocked out though but um, losing yeah. that hydro pump is really rough yeah it's not looking particularly good for Alex I mean the citrus berry here is gonna Regenerate a little bit of health, but uh, that turn could have gone so much better for Alex if he was able to get that knockout into Arcanine, or at least get some chip damage onto it. But now, he has to deal with an Arcanine that has not taken any damage yet. And, yeah, that Rotom is on his way out. So I think, unfortunately, Alex is gonna lose, pretty much gonna lose this game one. Uh, due to a lot of some, a little bit That's of bad luck. Rough. Yeah, I mean, two critical hits and then missing the Hydro Pump. Uh, Plus hydro hit pump. himself in confusion once. Yeah, that's... That's tough. I mean, there's ways to come back from it in like the next few games. But him on top going for the fake out into the arc, and I'm gonna stop the flamethrower from happening here. Um, as Rodom is gonna try to hit that, hy does manage to get the, hit the, the hydro pump this turn, and would have been nice if you're Alex for that last turn because you don't actually pick up the knockout with that attack, and you activate the berry here as well. So Arcanine is gonna uh, get back some of that HP that it had just lost. Duraludon going for that flash cannon one more time, and it's gonna be able to pick up an easy knockout here on him on top. Yeah, so it's now going to be Rotom against the world here, and unless Draladon misses a lot of uh, uh, Draco Meteors, I don't see a way for Alex to come back from this. It's still possible, like never give up, but it's it's really unlikely. This Rotom is getting bullied by two like kind of big bulky Pokemon too. As yeah. Arcanine goes for the Snarl, drops the special attack too on Rotom, so those Hydro Pumps aren't going to be do are going to be doing even less damage right now. Uh, we do have another Hydro Pump connected. That's two in a row, but not the two that Alex had needed. And Duraludon is going to go for that Draco Meter again. It was at minus two special attack. It's going to be at minus four now, but not going to matter because, I mean, this Rotom is... Yeah. It's gone. Yeah, so Tom is going to take game one. He got, uh, he got a lot of really good lucky rolls there. I feel if Alex, if, you, if you're Alex, you try not to let that like, affect you too much. Like, I feel like you played well for the majority of the game. You just, you know, maybe could have made a couple better plays. But in the end of the day, like, you know, Pokemon isn't... There's a lot of RNG in Pokemon, and... Like, you should know when to adapt and when to, like, know that you played well and you just gotta hope you don't get unlucky again. Yeah, I mean, I think the four that he had was really good, right? He used the he used the Lapras to the best of his abilities. I think the hard part there is when you have those critical hits that do way more damage than you inspect and then, obviously, missing the Hydro Pump because the pressure that he was putting on was, was really good there, especially at the end. Being able to take out the Arcanine would have been nice, and then Hitmontop coming in and being able to at least go for something like uh, Close Combat or any other like fighting type movement, Duraludon and doubling down into it, because I think that Duraludon went last every single time, so it is the slowest Pokemon on the field for, um, for all of them, and it's kind of tough because I think Alex had all the right tools on his side it was just it's just got unlucky yeah in, in, in the end of the day it's like again acknowledging when you got unlucky and not making too many adjustments maybe making a couple adjustments just to like uh, say okay if, even if i get unlucky i can still win this but yeah he got a lot of you know hit himself in confusion a couple of critical hits here and there the hydro pump missed uh, didn't help uh so it's it's quite a bit a few things that like when uh against Alex, but I feel like he has the tools to get the win. Yeah, I actually wouldn't be surprised if we saw another Lapras hit on top lead from him because that kind of works pretty well and you don't really want to lead Grim Snarl and Mudsdale against that because then you can you give him the free chance to go for the Max Geyser and then the Max Hailstorm later on. I think Alex's big problem is going to be that Duraludon and despite it being slow, it can still do a lot of damage to his team and it can it, it stays around for a longer than it really needs to for the most part and there's not a lot that Alex can do that we saw in this game at least to try to stop it. <laughs> It, I think what was interesting is seeing how long the Dynamax Pokemon stayed on the field. Like, that Lapras was on the field for a very, very long time. And then Duraludon was on the field for the entire time. Once they came in, and never left. 
and it did a lot of work for Thomas. It's it's really interesting to see how much Dynamax is uh, changing the it, it controls the field for the uh, for the trainer that it has it. Um, I still feel bad for Alex because I feel like he he was he made almost every play right. I mean, he has two games technically to try to bring that back right. As long as he wins this one, he's able to force it to a game three. I think what I, I think what I would like though is I appreciate that Arcanine has been carrying Snarl a lot more lately, and I think getting the special attack drops are really important, especially on a team like Alex's, which seems very specially driven uh, in terms. We saw Draco Meter in his um, top four match. We know that Lapras is a very specially driven Pokemon as well. So I, I think if there was a way for Arcanine to be able to utilize that Snarl a little bit more, then Thomas would be able to have Game 2 sort of in the bag. But I think pairing Hitmontop and Lapras is really nice because you at least have the fake-out pressure alongside everything else. Mm -hmm. I, I think we're about to begin here. Um, Alex has to win the next two games in order to claim victory and have his own Nintendo Switch. Whereas Thomas and I believe Thomas is this is his first event, correct? Yeah, he's played like I think he said he played three rounds at a Santa Clara event uh, and then dropped. So he hasn't really been delving into competitive Pokemon as much. He just recently moved to the area too. So oh, that's really nice. Like to you know, it, we had like we had eighty people today. Seventy nine masters and four seniors. Yeah, we had a lot of good players here today. Yep. So being able to make it all the way to the finals and this being he knocked pretty out much, Alberto last round too. I know, and Alberto being like a very very good player. And, you know, everyone is. Everyone has heard of Alberto. He has done very, very well. And to be able to beat a player of that caliber just speaks of how well Thomas, you know, practiced and, you know, got himself ready to finally come to an event and do well. And it's really mm. nice to see, like, new faces like that coming to events, like, participating in it. And I really hope to see, like, uh, new players do well. Yeah, and uh, after that, we are going straight into this match now, and I, I kind of want to see the Dragapult in place of the Rotom, because I don't feel that Rotom actually did as much for Alex. I mean, barring that one Hydro Pump miss, I honestly don't feel like it could have done... I don't feel like it did as much as it could have, but Grimstone and Lezzo is actually going to be the lead of choice against Tommy, and um, Alex is going to prove me wrong as he brings Rotom Wash and Hitmontap back onto the field. Yeah, so the Intimidate is not going to hit the uh, Mudsail because of the own tempo. Uh, and we have fake out on both sides of the field, and it. I mean, Rotom to Alex's benefit. Rotom is completely fine to deal with this Mudsdale. However, once uh, Grimstone starts setting up all those screens and stuff like that, I feel like Rotom's damage output is just going to be very, very negated. Oh, but there are going to be no screens this turn as Tommy decides to withdraw that Grimstone. Mm. He is going to send out that Gastrodon instead, so a little bit of a change up from him as well here. And is actually going to go for the um, Dynamax here on that Mudsdale, so we're going to see that big horse on the field. I think, you know, if you can double down into that and try to get as much damage into that Mudsdale, that might actually be better for Alex, because um, he has the only thing out pressure now here, and, has a, and we're going to see this turn if he ends up using it. All right, so we're gonna see if Fake Out is gonna go to any. If fake Out is gonna go into that Gastrodon slot, which is a switch in, so it's pretty much useless. But it does get a critical hit for that extra damage. And Will O Wisp, Will -O Wisp oh. does hit the Mudsdale. So where Hydro Pump failed, Will O Wisp succeeded. Which and Max, is odd. <laughs> yeah, I know. These is the opposite way. Uh, so Max Quake gonna hit that him on top. gonna increase the de uh, special defense for that Gastrodon and that Mudsdale. I faced a lot of Max Quake today, so I'm very, very familiar with special defense boost. Uh, that still did a lot of damage to that uh, hit on top, even though it's a, it's a minus two from them burned. Um, and yeah, I, I mean, that's going to be really nice for Gastrodon, too, because it's not, it's not have to worry as much now for um, those grass type moves, which it absolutely despises. And uh, it could possibly be a Rindo Berry Gastrodon, the berry that. Um, the like, lowest damage from a grass type super effective move. Yeah, so Rome is going to switch out because it pretty much can't do anything. Lapras is going to switch in for Alex here, and we're going to see how uh, Hamilton is going to go for that close combat into the Gastron. It's going to do a really good amount of damage here. Uh, it's going to lower the defense and special defense of the Hemotops, and it is going to be taking more damage now. And it's called from the Gastrodon, he's going to go into that Hemotop. It's going to almost pick up the knockout. No burn, and Max Knuckle. Ooh, did That's it make that reap? If he goes into Ooh, Ooh. into that Hemotop. So Max Knuckle is going to increase the attack of, the attack of both the Gastrodon and that Mudsdale. Not really important for that Gastrodon, but that Mudsdale being a plus one is going to be really helpful to uh, negate some of the damage. Uh, the burn that 
that it's this sustaining dude. right now. Yeah. yeah, and I think Lapis got really lucky here. It, if it had taken that max knuckle, that would have been in so much trouble. Well, like we would have taken some damage, but, but I, and it's nice coming in for free right here, especially as Dragapult is gonna be uh, the last Pokemon that Alex is gonna reveal here. Dragapult and Lapras are a pretty nice combination. We've only seen uh, three of Thompson's Pokemon that Grim's Metal in the back, and his fourth Pokemon unknown is probably gonna be that Dralodon because it, it is a pretty hard Pokemon to beat. Um, but I think we're yeah we're gonna see Alex go for that Dynamax right now. Yeah, so Alex is gonna Dynamax one of his Pokemon. We're about to see. Is it gonna be the? It's gonna be Dragapult. Oh, yep, you got it right. So Dragapult is gonna Dynamax here. It's gonna be able to do a lot of damage because it, it offers so much pressure. Where Lapras is not gonna be able to offer as much pressure here. Uh, Dragapult is gonna go for. Oh, Gastronome is gonna go for that Protect. So it's not gonna take. Too much damage unless the Dragapult that goes for it. Max Whirlwind is gonna go into that uh, Mudsdale slot. It's not gonna do that much damage thanks to that special defense boost they got from the Max Quake earlier. But it drops the attack, which is um, the important part here for Alex, like on top of the bird and then negating the uh, Max Knuckle. But Freeze Try, if it connected with that Gastron, would have been so nice. It's it just super effective damage. damage into Water type Pokemon. And uh, Max Knuckle one more time into that Lapras. So we are gonna be playing this plus minus game now. Between Max Wormwind and Max Knuckle. Yeah, so the Mudsdale is now at plus one, but it's also burned, so it's technically not doing as much damage. Uh, but it's no longer be able to keep itself uh, keep itself getting its attack boost, and while uh, Dark Pool is going to be able to reduce the damage it could potentially do here, uh, that Gastrodon is either going to have to switch out or just get knocked out by the freeze dry. And Thomas is in a good spot here because he still has two more Pokemon that we have not seen. So he has the room to just uh, withdraw the Gastronon like this. Yeah, Gastronon saying goodbye as Arcanine comes onto the field. It's going to get intimidated in both of these Pokemon, and it's absolutely not going to matter for that Lapras. But we do know that it has um, Snarl, so it's at least able to lower the special attack, which is going to be a little bit more important as long as it survives this next turn. Yeah, so Max Whirlwind is going to go into that Mudsdale. Does a little, does good damage. Still, that Mudsdale is like, very, very bulky. And it's going to get that attack uh, drop on both the Pokemon. And I believe that Arcanine showed Flamethrower last time, so it's not going to be that useful. Freeze Strike into that Arcanine. Not going to do that much damage thanks to the fire typing. Um, and we're going to see what Mudsdale is going to go for now. High horsepower into that uh, Lapras slot. Not going to do that much thanks to the burn and the uh, attack drops that it's been receiving. Yeah, and so I think right now um, Alex is gonna have to try for at least one like one knockout here because Dragapult is on its last turn of Dynamax. Uh, he's already got his Hemantom knocked out and it's gonna be down to that Rotom from before. And it won't be too bad with like the Gastron and the Grim Snarl still in the back for Thomas and I think he'll have a chance. But Rotom's gonna come onto the field in place of that Lapras. So he is gonna be trying to save that later as Max from Long Wing is gonna be the last one of the choice for this Dynamax. Is gonna go into the Arcanine. Does not quite pick up the KO here. But does get another attack damage in both um, the Pokemon, and and more importantly, this Arcanine is not going to be a minus two. Yeah, uh, but it is in range for its berry, so it's going to recover a good amount of HP back. And now we're going to be able to see Arcanine is probably going to go for the Snarl here, so it's going to reduce the special attack of both the Dragapult and the Rotom, and the Critical on the Rotom. You know, not that much more damage, but every little bit can help every now and then. And yeah, I feel like Thomas is really just like stopping Alex from getting any knockouts, thanks to. <laughs> but weakness policy here into that Dragapult is gonna actually gonna help him quite a bit. Close combat into that Roman is not gonna do any damage, thanks to the burn and the all the attack drops that he's been getting, thanks to that uh, nice. Max Whirlwind. And now Dragapult is gonna go back to his regular form, but he did get that weakness policy boost, so. It is threatening. It's a very threatening Pokemon right now. Yeah, I mean, that plus two special attack means you're getting one free, like, um, Draco meter and not having to worry about being below, like, that, that usual level. Um, well, technically, only a plus one thanks to the Snarl. Oh, yeah. Um, but at least, like, you'll be at minus one if you decide to use Draco meter here, which is still, like, better than like, yeah. having it to be at minus two. But do you want to wait? The uh, question for Alex here do you want to use it on and get rid of the Arcanine now and be at minus one? Or do you rather save it for later? Well, if he decided to go into that um, that Arcanine spot, it's gonna be Grimmsnarl taking that. But we get a double switch out actually from Thomas on this turn, so Gastrodon and Grimmsnarl gonna be hitting the field for his uh, two other Pokemon before that Arcanine and that Mudsdale before. But Dragapult hiding behind a Protect on this turn, uh, so letting Thomas at least have these Pokemon in for free. But Grimmsnarl is gonna take that Thunderbolt um, and no paralysis. Nope, no paralysis. Not that much damage to Grimmsnarl either. And now that here's the problem, Grimmsnarl is like free to set up its 
it's gonna start setting up screens again, which is gonna negate. I feel like Thomas has been doing a really good job of just stopping Alex from doing any significant damage. Meanwhile, he's been able to chip down every single one of Alex's Pokemon. And light screen's being set up here by Grimmsnarl, uh, getting that priority thanks to Prankster. And Shadow Ball gonna go into Gastrodon from that Dragapult. Does have that plus one from that weakness policy. Um, I manages to knock out the Gastrodon, and Willowith does connect again. That is two in a row between both games as of right now. Sorry, three. No, sorry. Two. two. My yeah. bad. Yeah, so where Hydro Pump fail, Willowith is succeeding. This and is an odd timeline. Yeah. Uh, so now uh, Alex has been able to, like, it's, it's flipping the table a little bit here because, like, uh, Thomas has taken quite a bit of damage on all his Pokemon and takes to that Shadow Ball, knocking out the Gastrodon. Uh, the Rotom is finally free to start just spamming the um, the Hydro Pump, and he, he, Alex can just go for a Draco Meter here into that Arcanine and get rid of it once and for all. Yeah, he's still got his Lapis in the back too, yeah. in case uh, things go horribly wrong for him. Yeah, but I think uh, his Rotom is the key to winning this game because it can beat the Mudsdale quite easily. Alright, and Alex is not going to want to risk getting that special attack lowered as he hides behind that Protect for this turn. Uh, Rotom is going to take that Snarl one more time. It's going to be at minus two now, I think. Um, and it goes for another Thunderbolt, this time into that Arcanine. Might get a Paralysis on the... Nope, still not that lucky on this one. But uh, Foul Play from Grimstar going into the Dragon Pool and is not going to connect again thanks to that Protect. Yeah, so the Foul Play is going to take advantage of that Weakness Policy, but I believe it's been Intimidated one, so it's only a plus one. But uh, one of the things about Foul Play, at least in the last generation of Pokemon, uh, if your Pokemon is burned, it's going to reduce the amount of damage you can do it, even if the your opposing Pokemon is um, has attack boost. And uh, Lapras is actually going to take the place of that Dragapult from before. It is going to take a Snarl for its troubles. It doesn't take that much damage, but gets that special attack drop. Um, Snarl has just been uh, Arcanine's move of choice this entire day, but does put uh, Rotom Wash into that range where it is able to eat that Citrus Berry, get that some of that health back. Going for the Hydro Pump, manages to hit it on its first try this time, goes into that Arcanine, and is going to be, oh, sorry, not able to pick up that knockout because those Snarls have just been hurting it uh, this entire time here. And Foul Play from Grimsnarl running out this turn, going into that Lapras so did take two attacks on a switch in but it's still in a pretty good spot yeah uh, I'm, I was a little bit surprised at first to see Alex is like getting rid of just giving up his plus one uh, I I believe he just didn't want to get knocked out by the foul play but again because of the burn onto the grin snow foul play it wouldn't do as much damage it still would do quite a bit of damage but I feel like you could have picked up a knockout onto that Arcanine and then just uh, you could win easily because there's no real way for that um, Mudsdale to deal with the Rotom. Yeah, that Rotom's gonna be a pain for Thomas right now. Like you said, he doesn't really have a lot of options on how to deal with it, especially because Mudsdale in the back um, is also burned and won't be able to really touch it thanks to the levitate ability that Rotom is carrying. And we know that Mudsdale has high horsepower. Um, we have seen it use Max Knuckle, so we know that it at least has a fighting technique, which is most likely a close combat. But you take a lot. You take a lot of um, stages of like increased defense for, for your troubles for that one there as well. Yeah, so another style, this Sprotom I believe is either minus 3 or minus 4 at this point. So Hydro, he needs to use Hydro Pump to get the knockout. Uh, fortunately, he does miss it. Uh, you know, not 100% accuracy. It will happen once eventually. Foul play from the Grin's now is going to go into that Blabber slot. Again, not doing that much damage, but because of the critical hit, uh, it's, it's. it. Yeah, again, I think Alex is like getting chipped down here. He's still in a good commanding position here, but he needs to hit that. Uh, you said the Hydro Pump, he yeah, that's been that really pump. rough. I mean, that's kind of the trouble of running something like Hydro Pump. I mean, this Arcanine has been on the field for, I think, a lot longer than Alex has wanted, but Thomas is definitely being, o is like, definitely okay with this, because this Arcanine has been able to chip down the special attack of both of these Pokemon and make sure that their am damage output is almost non-existent at this point. And then we get another Snarl here, and is not enough to pick up the KO on Lapis, but it's at minus three, which puts, um... For sure, wrote him at minus four or five if we can count this one, but does hit the hydro pump finally. Yeah, so it should be able to. I hope it can pick up a kill from here uh, into that Arcanine. So it's finally, finally taking this dog down. And it's been there for a very long time. It did a lot of work for Thomas in this game. Brim's now taking some damage from Freeze Dry. Not a lot, but Foul Blade is going to be able to finally pick up a kill onto the Slapras. And now it's just going to be that. Dragapult and uh, Gastrodon, I mean not Gastrodon, uh, 
Rodom versus the Grim Snarl plus the Mudsdale. Yeah, it's gonna be rough because Grim Snarl is slowly taking damage every turn from that burn, and Mudsdale is still burned, but I think. Oh, never mind. I was gonna say, I thought it was in the green. It is in the yellow right now. Dragapult, though, is sitting really pretty at almost full HP. Still gonna be able to deal a lot of damage, um, and Rodom has just not been taking any damage at all in the past couple of turns because the focus has been mostly on um, Lapras, but because it's the last two Pokemon, Alex doesn't really have a way to reset that special attack. Yeah, I'm a little surprised that uh, I see Thomas go uh, focus so hard on that Lapras when the Rodom is immune to... It, the Rodom is immune to uh, Mudsdale's uh, most powerful attack, which is high horsepower. Uh, so it's not going to be able to do that much damage to it. Uh, so double target into the Dragapult and did Rodom go for... Hydro Pump? No, both Pokemon and Alex's had actually protected on this turn. Mm. So yeah, so that's actually a really smart idea. Just let that burn, like, start taking down a little bit more. Uh, not necessary, but it, every now and then it's good to, like, make sure you guarantee yourself 100% win condition over uh, maybe getting unlucky with, like, Swagger. Oh, but... Oh, Rotom avoiding the attack from... Oh, the, sorry, avoiding the Swagger from Grimmsnarl as Draco Meter from Dragapult he next into that Mudsdale. is going to pick up an easy knockout here on that Mudsdale. Just a little bit of HP left on that Pokemon. Does get knocked down two stages of special attack. However, would you only have um, Grimmsnarl on the field and the Hydro Pump connecting here. It is a minus five, I want to say, here for Rotom. So not quite enough to knock it out, but the burn will slowly take that away. I think all you really need to do here is double protect is that Alex to yeah. just knock it out. Yeah, you absolutely cannot lose this if you're Alex. Uh, I, I did forget that Grimmsnarl did have access to um, Swagger. I'm a little bit shocked that Thomas decided to not go for like Swagger plus Foul Play. I feel like that would have been able to give him uh, a lot more room to not only prevent Alex from attacking, but also do more damage with the Foul Plays. All right, and so we do see that forfeit from Thomas, bringing us to a game three. So, I mean, hey, what type of finals would it be if we didn't get to a game yeah, three? Yeah, no, that was that was really well played by both players. Uh, there was very little to no RNG in this in this game, so it just came down to making good reads, figuring out how to which Pokemon were more of a threat. Uh, I feel like uh, Thomas could have made a couple of plays uh, a little bit better here and there, but I still feel like he played to the best of his abilities. Uh, and we're about to go into that game three, and you know this is the finals. There's 50 CP on the line, as well as a Nintendo Switch and a nice shiny trophy that uh, lights up. I, I'm more excited for the Nintendo Switch light because it's the it is the Pokemon Sword and Shield version, which is actually really cool. But I, I mean, this has been kind of a fun tournament to watch. Uh, there's been a lot of Pokemon that have been used that I would not expect to see at all, and even right now like lapras isn't something that i know a lot of people are thinking about using because it doesn't really have a lot of viability for some players right and so i think that's the unique thing about this format especially is that you have people who are like oh no i'm gonna use this pokemon and i'm gonna do really well with it and this is definitely one of it so uh we are having a little bit of connection problems but that's totally fine um we will get that back up on for you guys as soon as possible did they run out of games Oh. oh, they ran out of games. Oh, okay. okay, so we did hit the game limit for them. Yeah. So there you go. We do have to resend that. Uh, there is a game limit for locals. But, I mean, I'm actually kind of excited to see this finals. I think it's really cool to see how they've adjusted. And um, I love seeing when people use their Dynamax, especially. Like, Alex has been using it right at the beginning, whereas Thomas has been uh, kind of saving for later on. And, uh, oh, this venue is getting darker. I think it's time for us to Please start well, start packing, well, but uh, uh, we're still oh, they're trying. Re-registering. Are they re-registering? Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. That's very interesting. All right. Well, uh, we are getting them set up as soon as possible right now. So there is that spectator ID on there. I this is my favorite thing about this is that we have a spectator mode. I love this so much. I think it's no, so that's cool. a really cool addition. And gotta give uh, shouts to our tournament organizer Miguel because like Love his, you, Miguel. his layout is really 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 good like from a graphic design perspective I really like it what huh what layout the one for when the players are actually playing and you get to see the, the way that's, he has it that's spectator mode oh it's you no, oh. oh the name yeah. and yeah. the pokemon no that's spectator mode but also the yeah. pokeballs yeah um, yeah, and the Pokeballs uh, as a marker for like who won the uh, the games. Like I, I, I really dig it. From a graphic designer, I, I'll take it. <laughs> all right. Well, that was some background noise, but all right. 
Okay, I mean, I you know, I would love to see the Corviknight come in back here. I think it'd be really cool. I, I, I don't the see what Corviknight does here, honestly, because the Corviknight's not going to really do much to Mudsdale. It could do something to that Grimmsnarl, which did cause a little bit of trouble, but um, uh, I, I don't see Alex bringing it back. I definitely see that Dragapult coming back and uh, that Lapras. Uh, and for Thomas, I feel like the Arcanine did a lot of work for him. Like, Well, I mean, I think if you're Alex, you have to kind of see that Arcanine more of a threat and just get rid of it earlier because the more you let that special attack drop, the harder it is for your Pokemon to do the damage it needs to do to pick up knockouts. Yeah, but it's kind of hard to like stop that Arcanine when the, like, there's that fear that Gastron on in the back at all times. So it's... If you're Alex, you have to play very conservatively and try and like either like bait out that Gastrodon and try and pick up a knockout before you can go really trying to take out that Gastrodon, uh, that Arcanine once and for all. So but, we're gonna go into the <laughs> final match of uh, the mid-season showdown here, and I'm excited to see who's gonna take uh, home like 50 CP. Nintendo Switch and Trophy. I'm, I'm more, again, I'm more excited about the Nintendo Switch side, but Grimmsnarl and Arcanine just from the get-go here, and uh, we've also got that Hitmontop and that Rotom Wash, so Arcanine's Intimidate going to connect into both Pokemon. A little bit more important on that Hitmontop, but Hitmontop does have access to that Fake Out alongside that Grimmsnarl, but we didn't see that Thomas had switched out his Grimmsnarl turn one in game two, so we could see that same thing happening this time as well. Yeah, but uh, the thing is, if you're Alex here, do you... Do you risk just leaving the going for the hydro pump and potentially boosting the attack of that gastrodon, or do you like go for it, try and switch out and like reposition yourself to maybe deal with uh, what he has? Because right now I don't feel like Alex can really do anything to Tom. And you can try to stop that Arcanine or try to get as much damage into it now before it starts getting all those snarls piled up because, I, like you said, yeah, getting the Hydro Pump into um, Arcanine right, like when a Gastrodon might switch in will be really rough, but you also have things like um, Thunderbolt, but instead Rodom was actually going to switch out. We are going to get Dragapult in its place, so the Dragapult which was carrying that weakness policy that we've seen before as him on top goes for the fake out into that Grimm's also going to stop any sort of screens from uh, coming up on this turn as Arcanine actually goes for Safeguard. Oh, this is is not good for uh, Alex because now he can Tom Thomas can just go for like self swagger. So if he has that most day on the back, he can just self swagger himself and like get. A I lot mean, of even tackles. even with like the, even with the Mudsdale, you don't need the safeguard because it has its own tempo, so it won't get confused. But everything else, like you can swagger to whatever like you want at this point. I mean, mm. if you have the Gyarados, that would be actually really nice too, like to yeah. to have that. Yeah, so we can see the Dynamax from her. That Dragapult is gonna be Dynamax here, uh, so I'm guessing Alex is gonna try and get rid of that Arcanine. Like right now, he can't, he can't leave it on the field for as long as he did last time. We might see a combination of Max Wormman and a close combat going into that Arcanine, because like you said, you cannot leave that Arcanine stay on the field, especially now that you have Safe and you can't burn anything. Like that was Rotom's MO in that last game. His Light Screen is gonna go up from that Grim Snarl to help against the special attacks, and Max Wormman is going to connect into that Arcanine. So it does a lot of damage. Gets over half and, and gets into the 50 and a little bit just above the red uh, does get an attack drop here as well but that is clear for Hitmontop to try to pick up that KO here as it as the flamethrower from Arcanine will connect into that Hitmontop might possibly get a burn here though which will be really unfortunate for a uh, Alex but Hitmontop connects that close combat and picks up nice. that Arcanine which was a pain for him in the in that second game. Yeah uh, Alex like saw that Arcanine is a threat and he dealt with it immediately. He did not want to deal with it, and like now one of Thomas's best tools in game two is gone in turn two of the final match. It was really nice though, is like because you had that lens, you set up light screen first, so those attacks actually helped a lot too, because that way um, close combat wasn't really affected by that. You, it could have been the difference between picking up a knockout and still missing it by a couple HP. There's been a lot of Pokemon today who have not been knocked out thanks to those screens going up. Yeah, and I can I, I can I finally like I I was wondering why the safeguard, and now we're, I'm gonna see why because now uh, the other advantage that Thomas is gonna have he can't be burned by uh, by the Rodom if uh, Alex chose to do so. Uh, so that much though is gonna Dynamax here, and it's gonna it's gonna be doing a lot of damage to whoever chooses to attack. That self swagger would actually be fantastic. Yep, right there, that self swagger, and it is gonna hit. It does still have that chance to miss. It's gonna uh, boost that attack by two, and doesn't have to worry about uh, that confusion. As Max Phantasm from from Dragapult is gonna go to Grimmsnarl, not gonna do that much damage. It is gonna lower the special defense uh, of both Pokemon. Though. Oh, sorry, just regular defense. That is my bad. 
Uh, I'm surprised he went for the Grim Snarl as opposed to the Mud Still, because it's gonna resist. I mean, I'm guessing he's trying to pick up the Knockout here now. That that makes more sense, but I feel like you still go for the Mud Still here. Ooh, and Mudsdale going for Max Steel Spike, so is going to be able to do a lot of damage that Himontop picks up a clean knockout thanks to that swagger and that plus two. So Himontop is going to go down, but now you've got a Pokemon that's free to kind of come into um, the spot here. If we see that Rotom again, you can at least try to pick up that final knockout on Grimstone, or at least do some damage into that Mudsdale, because now you have to kind of worry. I think if you see Rotom, you don't have to worry as much um, from those other attacks, but you could pick up the knockout now on Grimstone and then force that last Pokemon out. I'm a little surprised he didn't want... I, I'm guessing you... Uh, it was trying to make a read for maybe Rotom come in, but if he'd gone for like the Max, um, was the Earthquake? Uh, earth Max move? Quake. Max Quake. He could have gotten a special defense boost uh, as opposed to a def uh, defense boost because neither of the Pokemon he's facing down right now are uh, especially uh, they're not um, they're not uh, physical attackers. They're both uh, special attackers, so he could have gotten that boost, but chose not to. So we're gonna see now how he chooses to adjust. Yeah, Rotom actually going for a Protector on this turn, and I think this is the last turn for um, for Mudsdale to be here. So another self swagger, so that's a plus four Mudsdale right now. Mm -hmm. And again, no confusion still because both of own type and safe artists. Max Phantasm, one more time for the Dragon Pool. Gonna pick up the knockout finally on that Grim Snarl. If you are that Mudsdale, you are going to be able to pick up a knockout of your choice at this point. Uh, except maybe that Rotom did hide behind a Protect, so if it gets hit by a Max move, I think we might see it get down to like about a third of its HP. Max pick, just kidding, it is definitely going into um, that Dragon Bolt. Yeah, that's not good for Alex. My, like, yikes. That Mudsdale is a very, very terrifying force. Yikes. So, it, and, it, and now I guess the special defense boost I was talking about earlier. So, we got a plus four ones there with, uh, behind a light screen. What and if it's that Gastrodon in the back? That would just mm, kind of, I think, the worst case scenario. Yeah, right that would be that would be really, really bad for Alex. So, we're going to see we're gonna see that Lapras once again, which does have that freeze dry, which would do a ton of damage Ooh. too. But it's actually the Duraludon, so... Oh, yeah, Those are two Pokemon that are actually going to be really tough to beat. I mean, you've got that plus four Mudsdale. I, it's got... I, uh, it's got one last turn of Dynamaxing, so it's going to be a really rough time here for Rotom and Lapras. You can't even burn them still because Willowis uh, won't hurt, won't hit because Safeguard is still up. Lapras, it's oh, I mean, if you've got a Water type move, that would be a great time to use it against that Mudsdale. But you're going to be taking a lot of damage no matter what, thanks to that plus four. Yeah, I mean, pl with the Light Screen plus the Special Defense boost, thanks to that Max Quake, it's. I feel like uh, Alex's options are really, really low here because that Mudsdale is terrifying. Uh, and you kind of have to protect that Lapras because otherwise it's just going to get knocked out immediately. And then it's going to be at Brodom versus the world. And uh, it, I want to see how it... And hopefully Alex can figure something out. Hydro pump. Oh, oh no! Oh, Rotom misses the Hydro Pump here. Uh, Flash Cannon from Duraludon does connect into that. Lapras does some okay damage here. But Lapras goes for the Blizzard, um, hits both Pokemon here, and... Mm, Oh my gosh, that Mazel is taking like absolutely no damage, and Max Knuckle up plus four is going to give uh, that Mazel plus five. Easily picks up that knockout on Lapras, and this Rotom is not going to have a fun time at all because that is a plus five Mudsdale and a plus one Duraludon. That is rough. Yeah, I feel like unfortunately that safeguard was actually the best play possible from that Uh Surprised to see that, honestly. I can't, can't remember last time I saw safeguard Arcanine. Um, and, but it was definitely the play for for Thomas to do because the, he prevented anything from happening to Mudsdale and now that Mudsdale is just, just carrying that game away. It reminds me of Xerneas in last year where if you let it just take over the game, it will take over the game. <laughs> Rotom is going for a Protect on this turn. I I guess just to kind of see what's going to be happening here is Drago Meter is revealed to be the Max Worm Win move that is based off of Mudsdale Ground for Close Combat. This Rotom is just delaying the inevitable at this point. I mean, they're still allowed. If, you know, you, for Alex here, you know, you don't want to give up. Uh, that Draco Meter can miss. You can get a critical hit with that Hydro Pump potentially. But it missed, and so that's not happening. To get a critical hit with Hydro Pump, you need to actually connect with Hydro Pump. Yeah. And this Rotom has just not been wanting to connect those water type moves, and Rotom is hanging on for that Draco Meter, which is, uh, you know, I'm really happy for it, but uh, it's not a lot you can really do now at this point. Yeah, looking, looking back at it now, maybe that Corviknight would have been really good here. Uh, but, you know, uh, congrats to Thomas, like, you know, 
did <laughs> just, oh but okay just for the cherry on top you also get that critical hit on the close oh combat my. as well so uh i mean tommy is able to win this um this final match and wins the mid-season so i mean good for him and like your first event coming back after not really liking your your matches from um, the first event that you went to that's pretty exciting and I don't mean I don't really know. I, we can we can have him up here if he wants to receive his yeah. switch on. I mean, this 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 beautiful sword and shield switch light. I love this thing so much. It's very nice. Yep. Its colors are really pretty. Hey Thomas, he's he can't hear me right now. But anyway, uh, thank you guys for joining us. That was really fun. Oh, I guess we're gonna show the trophy as well. Here you can hold this. Yes, I love these things. So on top of getting 50 CP, the coveted title of. Uh, the first mid-season champion for our sword and like our first like sword and shield one. You also get this really cool trophy. There is batteries in here because like he said, this batteries does are change. included. Uh, it does change colors once you light it up. So, um, I mean, congratulations to Thomas for winning this, and thank you guys for joining us. It is a very late night. I cannot believe we had almost 80 masters. That was pretty yeah. intense. Um, so, thank you guys for joining us, and we will see you at our next event, which is going to be in February. February first. Wow, what a way to start the new month. Yep. Oh gosh, so two weeks. Uh, also, register for Dallas. Have fun at Dallas next week, guys. Enjoy yourself. Uh, be patient with your TOs. And as always, please thank your TOs and your judges because they do so much for you guys. Like, thank you, Miguel. We appreciate you. And drink so, water. Yeah. Yeah, please stay hydrated. Oh my gosh, stay hydrated, guys. All right. Good night, guys.